excited. I'm excited. Can you see me okay? Yeah, yeah, I can. Okay, let me think for a second here. I'm just going to do the whole show. All right, you ready? Yep. Hey there, Bob from Oregon's Constant Gardener. Welcome. We got a guest. Welcome to the show, the OCG Fam Show to you, my YouTube buddies. What's going on? Let me know in the comments. Tim, we got you on the show. It's exciting. Say hey. What's up, guys? Hey, Bob. So the reason we got you on the show is for a viewer question. Can you can you take a viewer question? Sure. Okay. Yeah, let's do it. So um, I thought this would be a perfect one for you. The question is from Pipe North, and he says, Bob, can you please? Sh Why am I talking so loud? <laughs> he says, can you please share your IPM regimen for this grow? Thanks, bud. So our IPM regimen for this grow is whatever you say it is, because we're just going to count on you to figure it out for us. So, but I, I guess the, 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 the bigger question thing I want to ask you is, you know, a lot of times we have like these letters, you know, and what do those mean? I mean most of us know what it means in the integrated pest management, but what's IPM? Um, what does it mean? How does it all fit together with controlling pests in your in your garden? Sure. Um, like I said, in, uh, IPM stands for Integrated Pest Management. Mm -hmm. um, we usually have like a protocol, a regimen, um, some a, a list of products or a list of techniques to use to combat you know your various different bugs. You know, aphids require you to go at it a little bit different way. Uh, mildew requires a little bit different, but a little different method. Um, so do mites. So it's just a an, an integrated pest management protocol of how we can prevent all these bugs in our garden. So let me ask you this: It starts somewhat before you've even put seeds to dirt, and has to do with what you're growing, how you're growing, where you're growing, all that sort of thing. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Um, we like to so integrated pest management is composed of three things mainly. Mm -hmm. um, it's composed of environmental controls. It's composed of using predatory insects, predatory microorganisms, uh, biologic controls, and then okay. it's also composed of using biorationale chemicals. That means generally recognized as safe pesticides. So that means like a simple okay. oil blend, that means enzymes, that means, you know, it's, it's your safe chemicals to use in your garden. So we're not talking necessarily mm -hmm. the... I, uh, government type uh, specification or an industry. We're talking that generally, from what we know of these things, we feel that these are safe for using in, in our, our grow. Is that what you're saying to me? Yes, those are the, the fit for approved products. Okay. You know, those are the neem oils. Those are the, uh, you know, zyme, the enzyme products like Dr. Zyme's. Okay, uh, so not super dangerous to us in application and not super dangerous to our final product or not maybe hopefully dangerous at all to our final uh, product that we're making is what we're going for. Right. This, this does not include, uh, this does not include um, imidacloprid. This does not include mycobutanol, Eagle 20. This does not include Abbott. We don't, you can't, you can't, you can have environmental controls, but if you, you're using Abbott or imidacloprid, uh -huh. you don't have biologic controls. But your your beneficial pests can't live within those chemicals. Oh. So you can't have a really full, complete integrated pest management protocol. Okay, so arguable whether they're safe or not or whatever maybe, but they are certainly not practical in this application because we're using uh, beneficial um, bugs, and so this would kill them as well as the other ones. So we cannot right, use those in an integrated pest management scenario. Is that what you're right. saying? They're, they're, yes, they're not bio rationale. Okay, okay, I'm, I'm with you. I'm picking up what you're laying down. Okay, mm -hmm. so then what's next? So, so you know, we have the three. We have environmental, biologic, and fire rationale. So let's go into the first one, environmental controls. Okay, um, let's do you it. Have, you can be releasing uh, predatory insects. You can be spraying probiotic products. You can be using even some like essential oil blends. But if you don't have your environment controlled and dialed in, you're going to be fighting an uphill battle. Part of having a complete integrated pest management protocol is making sure your environment is dialed into the T. So that means reducing high humidity. If I'm getting a powdery mildew outbreak, I would reduce right. humidity. I'd either put a dehumidifier in there. Okay. Um, I would uh, increase airflow. I would add more fans. I would get the plants dancing a little bit more. Okay. Um, okay. What else I would do is I, I would go through and I would uh, my, I would start defoliating plants and start. Um, really going through and, and making sure there's good air spacing between the sure, plants. Sure, sure, sure. You're not making a, a cluster of canopy where powdered mildew can form because there's a, a pocket of humidity in your canopy. 
Okay. What about uh, cleanliness of your environment? That that goes into the environmental as well. Okay. Um, you want to make sure you're not bringing in or transferring in mites, aphids, thrips from other grows. Um, the number one vector for russet mites is you know yeah. trading clones and not knowing you have it on a clone. So cleaning sure, and making sure. sure you have you know plant dips before you get a clone from a friend and you want to alleviate all and you want to make sure no pests are being brought in. Do a plant dip. Okay. You know, mix up any uh, enzymes or mercenary and just dip your plant in that solution and then put it into your into your setting. So part of environmental controlling is making sure your utensils are clean, making sure okay. that your pots are clean, making sure that your, your your clothes are clean, making sure that your environment, you and your environment are are sanitized from all the pests, you know, or, or won't prevent won't cause an environment to allow the pests to thrive. Okay. And I'm, am I trying to seal up my environment to some extent? I mean, is that why we use a tent? Obviously, we use a tent for light, fast, safe, you know, lightness. But is there, um, is there something to that of keeping it separate from everything else? Yes. Okay. Um, you know, some people can see sealing off as like, you know, complete seal and having no positive pressure and just pushing in. The only positive pressure is the CO2 you're putting into your room. Okay, you know, okay. sealed room. Uh -huh. um, generally speaking, though, uh, we want to filter. Um, if you're having an air intake from outside to from outside to inside to give your air fresh air, to give sure, your room sure, fresh sure. Air, excuse me, you want to you know make sure you have a, a, a micron filter on the air being sucked in, so you're not sucking in mildew spores, so you're not sucking in other bugs. Okay, you know, okay, that would be a good environmental control as well. Okay, so. Mm -hmm. um, this is somewhat overwhelming, I suppose. What? what uh, let's 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 try to get through the whole thing. Is there more to this that we can talk about in the big picture of it? Yeah, insulation. Um, yeah. Environmental controls. Just making sure you have you don't have high humidity. Making sure you have good airflow. Making sure you're filtering the air coming in. You're just maintaining your environment. Right. Okay. Um, yeah. Sure. The next is those allow bugs to come in. The next step is using uh, biological controls. And this is doing um, ladybug releases, lacewing releases, uh, pregnantis releases, using uh, predatory mites preventatively uh, to catch any outbreaks that may be happening. And usually these are about once a week to, you know, once every other week releases, sometimes once a okay. month releases inside your garden. And these are just allowing the soldiers to go through your garden. And if you're using predatory mites, they go out and search for the two spotted spider mite. Um, if you're, you don't know, have aphids, you can release ladybugs and they will go through and eat your aphids. Uh -huh. If you have root aphids, you can use a product like Botanigar that has a, an entomopathogenic fungi. It's just a, fun, a fungus that attacks insects. Okay, okay. Um, those means are, are what we use for biological. Yeah. biological okay, and then, is that everything? One more. Then we have the bio-rationale. And th these are the, the safe pesticides you can the safe uh, chemical pesticides you can use this is mercenary um, and other things like that nature what you do okay tell me about yeah. that so this is where you know one product a couple products you spray are not going to be the end-all be-all your silver bullet to any of these bugs any of these pests you know mm, we so get that a lot we're thinking oh i'll just get the mercenary parts. but it's not that it's the whole thing but yeah, it's three parts to it. So this is a, this mercenary is, uh, is a good tool for your third part, which is bioreaction on exercise. So this is you know using uh, uh, mercenary as near your essential oil product. That's using neem oil even. That's using Doctor Zines. That's using Big Time Exterminator. The enzyme products. Okay. Um, you know that's using uh, some of these other agents uh, like uh, Regalia from uh, Maroon Bio Innovation. Right. Right. Uh, yeah. Plant extract and these plant extracts are a bioreactionale chemical insect or a pesticide that kills you know like as far as regalia goes mildew. Uh -huh. um, so it's just using these natural products along with biological products and using you know and making sure your environment's dialed in. Those three things are what makes an IPM. So you can't part. You have to make sure that when you're trying to figure out how to prevent bugs, you're getting each one of these three categories taken care of. Okay. And then, um, I guess also having happy, healthy plants is a big part of it too. Yeah. Yep. Um, that that wouldn't be a pest management, but no. the nutrient. But the, that that that's yeah. the kind of situation of the that, that makes them more resistant to the pesticides. But that's not part of what we're talking about here. That's just a natural part of what we're doing. So okay, sure. I, I I think I've got 
this is obviously a much longer conversation, you know, of how we do all this and with our, our grow. But the, the thing I did want to ask you is, is how does this all fit into the, um, the picture of someone like us with a, a 4x4 tent? And then maybe someone that's growing out in their garden as opposed to someone that's maybe got a, you know, 100,000 square feet of a, you know, <laughs> greenhouse or something. I can't imagine that that me here, I'm going to be doing all those things. Do I have to do all those things for my little tiny grow? Well, it depends on uh, what, you're, what you're doing, the problems you run into. Mm -hmm. um, no, you don't have to do all uh -huh. of those things. Um, you will be doing parts of those things, though. I guess um, the, the, the pressure I'm under from the pest has a lot to do with it. And also, um, maybe that I'm, I'm watching for these things and being somewhat proactive but not going in with five different you know pesticide things and ten different bugs and all this at the start. How do I how do I make that all fit for someone that's growing in a four by four tent? It's even easier. It's even way it's actually way more simple than like giant three thousand square foot warehouse. Uh -huh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh -huh. We, we, but the biggest things you'll run into with a 4x4 tent, let's just go right down the list, environment park, right? Okay, sure, you'll sure. See high, you'll see high humidity because you're zipping a tent up. Sure. Right? Right, so absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Good, you, need, you need to have good airflow in there to make sure that you're exchanging air, right? Back okay. and forth and the, the keep, keep stagnant air from forming. Okay, hold on um, one second. So, I was planning... I'm just throwing this fan in there and letting positive air pressure blow it out the sides. Are you saying that's not going to work, that I'm going to need to have some sort of ventilation system in my tent? It wouldn't work if you didn't have one of those in there. If you just put plants in there and just put a light in there and say you put a little clip fan in there. Yeah, that's what I got. It, I'm screwed. It, <laughs> it will work to an extent. Okay, once okay. You, once you get plants in there and they start, the plants are going to be breathing out humidity. Sure, right. sure, sure, sure. Okay. These plants are also going to be growing together because you have a four by four tent. Right. Right. They're going to be touching each yeah, other. Yeah, they're so going to be touching. Yeah. Pockets, pockets of really high humidity. Uh, okay. You, say you just have that one clip plant just blowing on them. That's not getting through the canopy well enough. Okay. So, so I need some sort of can fan situation with a filter. Is that what you're saying? Well, what I would do is put definitely put the clip fans in there. You need okay. like plant contact air ventilation, right? Air, air movement. And then what you also need is a small little can fan that can just suck out all the air from the tent and uh -huh. push it somewhere else and, and exchange it. That What that does is bring in negative pressure, so it, it brings in other air from the bottom of the tent and brings fresh air into the plant. Okay, so I'm going to have, a, a, tent, I'm gonna have a, a can fan up on top that is uh, exhausting air out. And then how am I going to be getting clean air in from the bottom? It's good all around you. You're, the air in the room will be, there's vents in the tent, and it's going to suck through the tent. Okay. And then how do I do that and keep the, the, the light from from getting in with those vents at the bottom if I'm doing that? Um, you know, there's there's very tiny holes. So every tent's different. Everyone has different, you know. So I'm not opening the flaps. I'm just letting the, the tent itself be in somewhat porous to air, bring my air, pre air in. Uh, usually they have like little bottom, bottom, um, they do. Uh, yeah. Little, little dots, little hold, uh, filter things. Yes. Um, that it, it kind of sections out the light, but also allows the air to be breathed. It's like they're a double bubble kind of two sleeves. It's a double sleeve. So you, oh, okay. I get you. I get you. Okay. Well, cool. Yeah. There's, yeah, there's these little ventilation flaps on the bottom that you can usually roll up to get fresh air. Into the tent. Okay. So let's just, you know, I think what we're going to have to do, we've given people kind of an overview of what it is, but we're going to have to do this one step at a time. So right yeah. now we've got our little, um, we've got our little, you know, little plants in there. There's not that much going on. I've got just the, the flaps open at this point. So that's, fine. that's probably fine for now, right? So what's the next step and when's the next step? So, you know, we should probably do it's a, a video on each one of these segments. Okay. Just so okay. we can go in depth about them. All right. Um, but you know, that is fine to the clip in. You can just okay. have the tent open. You know, some people aren't gonna to want to have the light bleed out. So you can also reduce the amount of light the plant can get. So I, I if you can, please keep your tent zipped up because it increases reflectivity. Okay, okay. Um, but you know, it with the little seedlings, you can set that up, put that little clip fan in there, and that'll be fine. It's just whenever the plants start to have like a, a legitimate canopy that you then really want to start you know, defoliating, you want to start increasing airflow, you want to start exchanging the air. Okay, am I running this clip fan in there 24-7? Yeah. 
But just, yeah, just you, like maybe you know, put it up on top there. Look, you could do it on top. You can do it around the general plants. You know, think okay. about the nature. Nature moves air always at night during the day. It's always moving. Sure. You want to mimic nature. Have we call it biomimicry? You want to okay. mimic nature inside your 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 uh, garden. Okay. Well, that's a good first step. I think we're I think we're going there. And then are you are you you're down with doing this? Like, let's go through step by step what we do with the IPM on the grow as we go as we do it. Yeah, we, let's do it. Um, All and, right. You know, yeah. if we want to just real quick go over some of uh, yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. the little seedlings. You know, environmental yeah. control, so airflow is one, right? Right. The second one, let's go to uh, biological controls. You know, you want to be using beneficial microbes in your soil to prevent die off. You want to keep the root systems healthy. Okay. You know, you were, so, and you want to make sure that, you know, you can release uh, predatory mice right now. Um, you want to use, use them preventively. So you don't have to use the whole arsenal, but there's like um, uh, Swirskis, Swirsky predatory mites. And you okay. can release from the seedlings and they'll just patrol the area and make sure everything's good. So okay. you can do a predatory release if you would like. And then I would recommend, you know, once they get two to three, four tiers on them of leaves, then start in with the mercenary applications. And then you okay. have all three of your IPM regimen going within the first month of, of plant production. Okay, so right now what we're doing is uh, we're watering them every couple days and we're putting some SLF, some full on, and some Dr. Root in there. Is there anything else we need to be doing at this point? Nope, you got the enzymes. You know, you got the, the beneficial uh, microorganisms that ward away pathogens, you uh -huh. know? And then, you know, you have full on to help get that plant growth going. Okay. So we're good to go. That's, uh, boy, this is a this is a, a big deal. This is a lot to it. So let's chop it off here. And then let's like, uh, I don't know how often, as often as we need to, let's start working on the IPM thing. Yeah, let's just do a breakdown for everybody. I think everybody would be super appreciative of that. And I think it'd be super helpful for everybody to get on top of these bugs, these pests, you know. Outstanding. Well, that's the show for today. I love you. Tim loves you. We love you. We're going to see you tomorrow. For more information about anything on today's show, go to our website, ocgfam.com. And if you buy anything while you're there, use the discount code FAMHARVEST. It's going to save you 20%, and it's a lot of fun. The OCG Fam Show, it's pretty good. It happens every day. It's the OCG Fam Show. See you tomorrow.